one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and Mr. Emmett, we're going to start with you. We have a staff recognition tonight. We do. Um, this evening, uh, we have our friends from the Keene Foundation uh, to come up and give a presentation on what's going on with the Keene Foundation after school program. Carolyn. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, I, have, I wish I didn't have to, but I can't see anymore. Um, Hello, uh, for those of you, small crowd, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolyn Fazina. I'm the director of the Keen on Kids After School program. Thank you very much for letting us come and share about our success um, this last year, what we have planned for programs coming up, and to make an exciting announcement about October. Um, last year, we had an overwhelming success with exciting and enriching programs. We finished the school year with over 2,100 enrollments. It's about 130 more enrollments than last school year, and nearly 40% of the elementary school population participated in our after-school programs. We continue to be able to fund scholarships for families in need who were identified by school social workers and who would otherwise not be able to participate in our programs. Um, I'd like to just share a quick um, a couple accounts of great things that happened this year. Um, I love these stories. It just shows um, the great stuff that's happening after school. So um, at one school on the first day of aviation, a student arrived at the beginning of, um, with their classroom teacher. The teacher came with them because they wanted to let the instructor know that the, the student was a selective mute and probably would not be speaking during class. First, I'd just like to say that that's a great example of the partnership that we have fostered with the schools. Um, that type of information is really helpful when leading a program. Um, but more importantly, I'm also happy to say that surprisingly to all, this student did speak throughout the program and engaged with this instructor the entire time. I believe this is a result of providing really interesting programming with very qualified, engaging instructors in a comfortable space where students can build confidence and connections. Um, also, we were able to provide scholarships to two students, a brother and a sister who were here from Syria. Their family recently found themselves as Weathersfield residents with pretty much nothing, starting over from scratch. Through collaboration with the school social worker, we found out about these students, and after some discussion with their parents and a little convincing that this would be a good thing for them, we got them enrolled in a few after-school programs, one of which was gardening, which I had the, have the pleasure of leading. Every week, it was more and more exciting to see them change. They started out a little unsure about this whole after-school thing, not really knowing many kids, and in the end were completely engaged. They made new friends, asked really inquisitive questions, and were able to just have a great time in a relaxed environment with support and guidance from caring adults. So this is a couple examples of really great stuff that happens in after school programming besides the actual learning something really great. Um, this year we will be offering our readily successful programs and well-loved, as well as a few new ones. We'll be offering photography, art ventures, uh, sound formation and percussion, and girls only coding, all of which I'm sure will be great learning experiences for the students in many ways. I would like to just take a quick minute um, to speak briefly about the girls only coding program. This idea came to me after seeing a report about the lack of girls in the tech field. One of the points it made was that the key to preventing girls from dropping out of tech fields is to make them more comfortable with computer science when they are younger. And this got me thinking a lot. So I found um, in a newly re released study about STEM education done by Microsoft and uh, KRC research that said despite the high priority that is placed on STEM in schools, efforts to expand female interest and employment in STEM and computer science are not working as well as intended. And this is especially true in technology and engineering. Um, according to the Labor Department statistics, the STEM gender gap varies. Women only hold 16% of the nation's engineering jobs, 21% of computer programming jobs, 25% of math-related jobs, and 38% of jobs in chemistry. 
So you might be thinking, what does an eight-year-old care about career planning? But the research that I found said that these are formative years. They're the years where students are building their confidence, where they're building their interests in what they will do when they grow up, where they're visualizing what they will look, what they will look like when they grow up and who they want to emulate. I'm saying all of this because I realize that a girls olding program is something new that we have never done. We're really proud of the fact that overall, our overall enrollment year after year in all of our program, programming is pretty much a 50-50 split with girls and boys. But I do realize that there are families out there that may be feeling left out. But, but this is the reality. We have had computer coding program in, at the elementary school level before, and of the 15 students, 13 were boys and two were girls. In the last session um, of after school programming, um, there were two different programs offered at the middle school, and no girls signed up for computer coding. The fact is, boys are going to sign up. They are going to register. They have been and are going to continue to pursue these fields on their own. So this program, this girls after school coding program, is designed to test the waters and see if girls will be more likely to participate in a section that's just for them. And I'll be sure to let you know how it turns out. I know, out. I'm gonna be most interested. Um, as you remember, last year the Keene Foundation provided additional funding, so no program was over $10 a week. That resulted in 88 new enrollments over last year, um, last, the prior year's enrollments. With this success, the Keene Foundation has voted to continue to supplement the more expensive programs and to ensure our costs of no more than $10 per week that it will continue for the next school year. Um, so we are also looking at next steps for our after school program. In the coming months, we will be conducting surveys, focus groups, and other research as part of a needs assessment. Our numbers and excess, success have been great, but we're always open to how we can get more students involved. And then lastly, I'm excited to talk about this. Lastly, I'd like to announce that on October 22nd at 6.30 in the Weathersfield Community Center, we will be holding a Lights On After School Expo. Lights On After School is the only nationwide event celebrating after school programs and their important role in the lives of children, families, and communities. The effort has become a hallmark of the after school movement and generates media coverage across the country each year. We are putting together an, together an expo that will include most, if not all, of our after school program providers. It will showcase all the great things we are doing in each school during the after school time. We will have demonstrations, hands-on activities, takeaways, and raffles. The goal of the expo is threefold, to bring attention to the importance of after-school programs in general, to get more Weathersfield families to see the great opportunities we are providing for the after-school time, hopefully resulting in more students participating in our after-school programs. And lastly, to bring attention to the Keene Foundation as our sole provider or sole found funder. Um, you all will be receiving invitations soon, as well as many other supporters throughout the town and state. We will, continue, we will be inviting Weathersfield school fam, Elementary School families to attend as well, and I'm really excited to show what we can do on a bigger scale. Um, so a flyer went home to all elementary school families via school messenger on Monday. Um, Thank you very much for taking care of that for me. Um, it announced the next session as well as several important reminders. The Parks and Rec brochure came out in the rare reminder a couple weeks ago. It's available also online um, on the Parks and Rec, Rec website. Information uh, for each school's after school programming can now also be found on the district website under each school's individual web page. Just click on Keen on Kids on the left and then choose current programs. Um, registration opens tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, and we will probably have classes that are full by 8.30. Um, wow. That's what we've started to see. 
Um, I have been told that um, moms sit at the computer and just keep hitting refresh till they can get in there. Um, so I'm excited about that, that we, people are waiting for it. Um, families should plan to register as soon as possible, and as usual, we encourage them to register online, but they can still register via mail or by visiting the Parks and Rec office here at Town Hall. Um, I look forward, as always, to um, anyone sharing their ideas and feedback with us so we can continue to make this program successful. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions for Caroline? Kevin? Um, first of all, thank, thank you. You're as welcome. A, as a, um, first, as, I guess as a Board of Ed member, I mean, your numbers speak for themselves. I mean, this is the most successful project we've probably had in town in some time. I mean, uh, really, the numbers speak for themselves. But as a parent, um, you know, my, my kids participate along with almost, I feel like, <laughs> the entire town. But <laughs> knowing that they're going to be in a safe setting, they're going to be exposed to you know, these different programs that they normally wouldn't be would probably pick on their own but they said oh it's only for a few weeks well you know we'll do it like my daughter might do coding um, and they're exposed to all these other different children and uh, folks within the system that they normally wouldn't um, see but and I would also say that at 758 tomorrow both my <laughs> wife and I will be because <laughs> God forbid we miss you know the exact thing that my kids want well if people don't know your children Ellie and James I think they sign up for almost everything because every time I'm in that school they're in the program that I come to visit well, so. you know, and, it's, and, and it's, I pre I love that we and it's that's hard great because it's I almost I pinch myself that I don't want to take it for granted because I'm Mrs. Evans I mean like with our kids and we're working families like what would we do without it and um, I, I, it's not every town has this, and we're very fortunate to have. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? This is what the third year this has been. This up is right? our fourth year. So it just we'll started. Be, right? Yeah, we're beginning our. This is tremendous. It just started, and it's, it's yeah, this is our nearly fourth half year. the population <laughs> of elementary doing it. It's yeah. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. We, t but you know, I keep thinking there's like a. 60% of kids out there who aren't participating. So that's a lot of the work that I'm doing now is with these trying to, I'm actually working with the Connecticut After School Network and some researchers to start to look into why, how do we get them in, engaged and what are the barriers, what's keeping them. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have some ideas, but I really want to see from them why aren't you participating. And, um, you know, we'd love to have everybody participating. So. We'll Tremendous see. job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, take a look at those two little ones because my I alarm. Know. I know. <laughs> see them. At 8 a.m. There you go. Sign up. <laughs> so, so. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Carolyn, yeah. I, I would just like to say also, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that your efforts as the glue. <sighs> Uh, originally, we were doing this over at the Pitkin Community Center, and you know, Judy and I would meet and figure out how do we get the busing. The busing was extraordinarily expensive. How do you get kids from Highcrest up to the Pitkin Center? You know, we used our special ed van at one point in time. We tried all kinds of different options, and then Carolyn stepped up and really um, kind of piloted it over at mm -hmm. Charles Wright. And it was a model that worked, and it's been expanded upon, and it has been a tremendous success. Carolyn, thank, thank you. you so much for thank your efforts. Thank you. It's I, I, I would. This is a dream job, really. You know, when mm -hmm. you find the right thing. So I, I do um, enjoy it very much. But it began as a. I think why it's successful is because when it began at Charles Wright, it was um, because a bunch of parents wanted this to be in place, and so it's always even, even though I'm like. I'm the director. It's really parent-driven. I, I don't, I'm not kidding when I say I welcome all feedback and all ideas. I get a lot of ideas from just parents who say, you know, my kid really wants to try magic. Okay, where do I find magic? <laughs> but then somehow divine intervention <laughs> happens and I, somebody sends me an email that they do after-school magic. I mean, that, so it's always been parent-driven and I think that's why it's successful. Parents know what their kids want too. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. also, you know, we talk about, we talk to the kids too. So. Yeah, but it, thank you very much. It's um, a great job. Um, so, and I hope yeah. it continues. For and many, are we many doing years. the ukulele club again? Um, not we probably in the winter spring. Unfortunately, um, the instructor we timing was not working this time. But we are yes, we will be doing ukulele again. So, Excellent. but a lot of other really fun stuff. And if things that's you know things come and go in a school, but they always come back. And I, sometimes I take things out so we can try new things. So just in case anybody asks. 
it may come, it'll come back or mm -hmm. if you see something at one school and it's not at your school it will show up at your school eventually it's just Excellent. the number of days and hours we have to work with you can only do so much so exactly. thank you very thank much you. thank you well, Caroline on behalf of the board and the entire Wethersfield public school <laughs> system we thank you and I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, Wethersfield's own fairy godmother <laughs> Judy Keene thank you very very much all right, moving on to mundane things here. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on August 6, 2019. Are there any corrections? All right, may I have a motion to approve those minutes? Moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. And we also have the approval of the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on August 20th, 2019. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. So moved. Those minutes are approved. And now, is there anyone wishing to come up and make a public comment? Please come to the podium and state your name and address, and may I remind you that we keep you to about five minutes. Good evening, Ken Lesser, 8 Hawthorne Way. Weathersfield. Um, welcome back. I'm excited about the beginning of the school year and working with all of you. I'm so excited that in about 45 minutes, I have 21 choraliers coming to my house for a party. I'm sure there'll be lots of singing. Right now, they're with Mr. Rio at Bertucci's, but they're coming over to my house. So if you see me duck out in a little bit, uh, nothing personal, but I have to help chaperone. But I, besides uh, just wishing well and looking forward to working with you, I do have a, uh, a more serious thing to talk about real quickly, and that is I want to inv uh, invite you and kind of update you on the Career Advisory Board. So our first Career Advisory Board meeting is going to be Monday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock at the high school. And I want to thank Diane, Elaine, Bobby, and the superintendent for helping and being involved in that and the important work that we've been doing there. But let me just highlight for the rest of the board and the audience three things from last year uh, and then um, uh, certainly answer any questions. I don't know if you guys probably don't engage like that. But um, real quickly, three things I'll highlight. One is we had our first ever career fair, and that was extremely well attended by our students and I think they got a lot out of it and we will build on that every year and I think that's a real valuable thing for our students too we have partnerships with travelers and IBM and our students got to go on-site industry tour at the travelers to learn career skills and to get um, look at what a, a, a real company is um, doing and how our students can kind of see the future and I think that's really helpful to them and the last thing I'll mention is we had several lunch and learns where we brought in career uh, professionals to speak to our students uh, I'll give you one example we had Joe D'Ambrosio a well-known sportscaster who came in and talked about careers in broadcasting so we're we're off to a great start with a lot of community leaders involved um, at, on the Career Advisory Board, and I welcome uh, members of the board to join us and help us. And again, our first meeting is Monday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Great. Any questions for Ken? It is. It's a wonderful group of people, very enthusiastic. Thank you, Ken. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. So tonight we have one action item. Chris? Would you read motion 65A for us? Uh, yes, it'd be my pleasure. To get our numbers right. Let's see if I got it right here. <coughs> Silly wireless thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> recommended motion. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the proposed revision of the student use of private technology devices, also known as policy 5870. Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? If I may, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, 
This policy has been uh, debated, uh, discussed at great length by mem members of this of the policy and planning committee and the board at large uh, for the better part of almost a year. And I wanted to thank publicly uh, everyone who's participated in this, not the least of which were staff and teachers who uh, responded very vigorously to a, uh, uh, a questionnaire put out by the uh, superintendent, Superintendent Emmett, who's been absolutely fantastic on uh, navigating this, finding alternatives, looking at other policies around the state, country, uh, and even internationally. He didn't, but I did, um, which I'll explain later. Um, the administrators and, of course, uh, people on the policy and planning committee and uh, John Morris, of course, who uh, raised some incredibly important legal points. Uh, the policy and, plan policy and planning committee uh, met uh, earlier this uh, last, on the 20th of August to review and discuss the changes to this policy. We received a lot of additional input from our uh, legal team at Shipman and Goodwin. Um, and we recommended that the action be taken tonight at the regular meeting uh, to approve this policy revision. And it is pretty simple in its design. Uh, as you can see in your packet, it's just designed to uh, have a policy for the use of uh, smartphones and technology devices as so defined, and there are lots of them, uh, when uh, students come into the school uh, so that we respect people's uh, time and um, uh, the, the instruction process in the classroom, respect for others, and it's a, obviously a significant step, but it's here because, as we know, uh, over the last, I think, is two years, a year and a half, every child now has a Chromebook uh, to use as a learning device. And in the past, this was my understanding before I came here, that we didn't all have that, so the phones had a utility, a utility I say utilitarian use? Is that a big word or utility use uh, in instruction? Uh, that is not the case now. Um, and I uh, know that this uh, transition will be um, new to parents and teachers and administrators. I know it will require some work, but in the end, I think, I hope, it's my, I hope it's a desire, I know it is a desire of everyone in the committee that this will be a good thing for the learning atmosphere and conduct of what goes on in the classroom for all the students in the school system. And um, I want to assure, at least this just coming from me, that uh, to all the parents out there, that the staff is going to work very diligently. They should have had no fear of being able to contact their children during the day through regular processes. Um, but we think this is a necessary step. And um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions about it. But I think you'll see some of the redlining that we did to try to make it as simple uh, as possible and that the administrators are going to be working on regulations to address certain implementations of this policy. Needless to say, as we approach the new year, there'll probably be some uh, learning as we go forward. Mm -hmm. And I'll be happy to put my phone number out there for people who have complaints. <laughs> Just take a little heat off. So that's, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to talk sure. to that, to this Anyone issue. else have any questions or discussions, Kevin? Uh, Chris, I know I know you reached out to a lot of the uh, PTOs and WSPC, um, and you've addressed some of the issues that parents had regarding safety of their their child, their student. You know, I, you know, God forbid, there's something happens in town that you know I want to be able to reach my uh, son or daughter at the high school or, or wherever. Um, I know you've kind of looked at some research that says um, this is actually a, this type of uh, this policy is actually safer for students. Yeah, rather than get into uh, theoreticals, I think uh, what we look, found is that, uh, and I know uh, the superintendent could speak a little bit more to our emergency protocols, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's no question that in the event of any kind of emergency in a school anywhere, uh, it's incredibly important for the teacher to have the ability to uh, secure that classroom and for the administrator to secure that school uh, and uh, keep as much internal and external communication to a minimum depending on the situation uh, because a lot of misinformation does come out there's a lot of panic and we've seen in some horrible incidents around the country where this was a problem where um, we had lots of phones and obviously people were using them it's not a it's it's not 
saying anything that was bad about it. It was just the reality of it. But in terms of keeping uh, the place secure, uh, it's it's been seen that it's a much better option to have uh, the lines of communication clearly li lined out with as little confusion and panic as possible, and this will help do that. Um, that's that is our that's our goal, and I mean I, we think that common sense would dictate that as well. Thank you. Yeah, and one of the key pieces to the policy was that these phones are on the students, but they're off. Yes, off and out of sight. And mm -hmm. I think, again, this gets to, uh, there are a lot of, obviously, issues that go with a, with a phone. And I will say that students are not the ones that always have used it. We adults do it all the time. Uh, and I think it's, it's important for us to have a culture of sort of look up from where you are and let's, let's make mm -hmm. the most of every day. Hopefully that's what will happen. And uh, uh, we look forward to trying to implement this as, as effectively as possible. And Michael, we discussed how this would be communicated, how this policy would be communicated out. Yeah, this will be communicated out through uh, the administration to the Weathersfield High School staff and students. Um, again, this is not a ban of cell phones whatsoever, mm -hmm. but this is really designed to make the learning environment safe and secure and focused. Um, you know, one of the things that I think we did with this was the direction for administration to come up with regulations. There's a lot in our policy manual already within this um, student right. code of discipline that's already there that gives us the, uh, the wherewithal to be able to uh, exact disciplinary action. The concern that um, came about was with regard to the seizure of the um, the phone. So that's what we made the adjustment to. Worked with Attorney Yoder over the course of the summer. I know Attorney Yoder talked with you, John, and we made some adjustments. So um, there were clear. There is another policy, and actually uh, Attorney Yoder talked about their policy being somewhat redundant. So there is a section that was removed because it is actually contained elsewhere in policy 5610. So we tried to uh, clean things up with regard to this. So the idea of you know students being able to utilize the phones in common areas such as the cafeteria that's still there, um, but again during instructional time they need to be away, so students are focused on on learning. That's the key piece here. Okay. Diane, I I think not only does this policy focus the students on learning, but I think it indirectly will affect um, any bullying situations or harassment situations that have been going on and um, mm -hmm. I know that phones have been used um, in the past for this. And also the, the one thing I think is important is it's teaching these kids that um, they don't constantly have to have their hand on this um, piece of equipment. As, as I hire millennials, um, that's a huge issue that I have. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get them to put their phones away um, and I know other people are, are seeing that too with this this generation so I think hopefully we're going taking the step in the right direction right Elaine I think in the policy meeting uh, we asked Mr. Emmett if he could make sure this gets into the uh, whatever the online handbook for the high school too did we discuss that Michael mm -hmm. Make sure, just it's got to be approved it's first. So you approve it, we'll get it in there. <laughs> when you approve it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what about the middle school? It'll be, it's, it's across the district. What I will tell you is at the middle school, the usage of the phone is not nearly as significant, but this is something that will go district-wide. Like, elementary yeah, level? They even have, they have the cell phones in elementary school. It's more for a GPS mm -hmm. set up for parents. Mm -hmm. That's what they've used them for. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will get to the middle school as well, absolutely. John? Um, I'm very pleased with the way this has turned out. Uh, this to me was a very nice example of collaboration between a lot of groups, individual board members, policy committee, administration, and council's office, and back again and forward again to give us a, a policy that I think does what we need it to do, doesn't reach too far, and is, is not boilerplate, it's not off somebody's internet you know, feed, it is something we give a lot of thought to, tweaked, tweaked again, considered and retweaked, and, and I think we have a very good product at this point. I'd be very happy to support it. When does school start again? <laughs> Tomorrow? Thursday. Okay. I got two vacation days, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, any more discussion? 
Okay. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Motion 5A Thank you. passes. Nice job. Nice job, Thank Chris you. and everyone else. Mr. Emmett, you have communications to share, and a lot of them. I have a lot of communications to share this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, I'd like to start off communications this evening with uh, taking the opportunity to recognize maintenance foreman Dave Tringali, who will retire this Friday after serving the district and the town for over 27 years. Dave often worked behind the scenes, but was instrumental in keeping the buildings warm in the winter and cool in the summer for those buildings that had air conditioning. Dave didn't want any recognition as he departs, so I will simply say thank you, Dave, for a job well done and best wishes in your retirement. I wanted to give you a follow-up on the Marinholt Scholarship. Last spring, I had reported the district had received word that it was named in the will of a town resident by the name of John Marinholtz. Mr. Marinholtz's estate was settled early this summer, and the district received just under $164,000 for the initiation of the John and Marjorie Marinholtz Memorial Scholarship. This act of generosity is deeply appreciated and will serve to support the educational dreams of our students for many, many years. That's great, huh? So, uh, update on the phase two work. The phase two work is largely complete with scenario planning wrapping up at this point in time and work ongoing with regard to cost estimation and uh, cost flow estimates. I do anticipate the work finishing early fall with scenarios being presented at an upcoming board meeting. The Alice Challenge on August 9th, Kim Bobbin, uh, Lisa Puglielli, and I presented our Alice Challenge grant proposal before the United Way Board. This proposal culminated the work of stakeholders across the town to identify ways to support our Alice families and assist them in accessing available services. This work is directly aligned with the district strategic plan, goals two and three. And while the grant funding is not huge, we see this as an opportunity to network with other potential funding sources. One immediate benefit of this was the United Way school supply donation that was made to youth services just last week. We expect notification regarding our grant application after the United Way board meets on September 23rd. Hiring over the course of the summer, uh, we had a busy hiring season uh, and I wanna say a special thank you to all staff members who participated on the interview committees and observed demo lessons over the course of the summer. I am very impressed with the talented group of new employees that we've brought aboard. On the administrative level, Paul Cavallari has returned to serve as interim assistant principal at Weathersfield High School. Uh, he takes over for Andy Komar, who after 10 years has left the district to become principal at Mitchell Elementary School in Region 14. Uh, the position has been posted and candidate screening will begin next week. Uh, last count, we were well above 100 candidates for this particular position, so um, we have a pretty strong pool. Uh, crossing guards, I had the opportunity to uh, meet with our crossing guards this afternoon as they attended a welcome back session at Stillman. Uh, on behalf of the crossing guards, they remind you all to be alert and be aware around intersections and to exercise caution on the roads as the new school year begins. Our food services group is ramping up for the start of the school year. I'm pleased to announce that Bobby Schultz will be joining the district as the assistant director. Bobby joins us from Marlboro, where he was uh, the director, assistant director for Mary Thines Elementary School in Marlboro. Bobby has experience with recycling programs and was eager to hear about the no more plastic straw proposal from the web students. So we are in the process of working on that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's in the works and I'll be talking with the kids about that on Thursday when I visit web. Um, student rep for the board. Uh, the election for the student board rep will take place during the week of September 9th. I'll have the results for you as soon as I receive them from WHS. The Democratic primary will take place on Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, Webb and Emerson Williams uh, serve as polling locations. As these buildings will need to be open to allow for voting, uh, we will be floating security staff from Silas Dean Middle School, as well as Weathersfield High School to those schools on that day as an added safety measure. In addition, our security director, uh, Hal Even, will also split the day within Webb and Emerson. Band camp wrapped up with a performance on Catone Field on Friday afternoon. Um, very proud to say that uh, Ms. Steinmiller Paradise, Councilman Spinella, and I were given the task of conducting the band. I am relieved to report that there were no injuries nor were any <laughs> instruments harmed during our conducting. Certainly best wishes to the band on a successful competition season and a thank you to the many parent volunteers who make the band experience such a positive one. 
The fall sports schedule ramps up over the next week. Um, we'll be digging into the scrimmage schedule next week and then into uh, real games the following week. Please check the district website for schedule information. The annual Winton Keen Bittner uh, Soccer Jamboree takes place this Saturday at Catone Field. The opening ceremon ceremonies take place at 10 a.m. If you're able to attend, please do. It's a great event. Uh, we had a lot of activity among our administrators and our teachers over the past couple weeks. Uh, the administrative retreat occurred on August 15th, 16th, and 19th. The program included the annual legal updates, along with the session from the State Department of Education regarding utilization of EdSite Secure. On Friday, we attended a ropes course in Bristol, and the focus there was on team building and problem solving. Uh, Bart Crawford coordinated this event, along with facilitators Rodney Brown and Melissa Grafham from the Pine Lake Challenge course. On August 19th, after the new teacher introductions, the team returned to Stillman with Bart to continue our work around becoming a more effective team as we continue our leader-leader work. New teacher orientation occurred last week. Um, we met our new staff members over at the high school on Monday. And for the remainder of the week, they had a variety of activities uh, designed to acclimate them to the procedures, benefits, curriculum, and of course, we gave them some time in their classrooms to prepare. And then today, convocation occurred this morning at Weathersfield High School. This annual event featured comments from Chairperson Granado, our Paraeducator of the Year, Renee Soderberg, Weathersfield Teacher of the Year, John Martin, and myself. Congratulations to Years of Service Award winners Stephanie Laskowski and Carol Murphy, each with 25 years of service to the district. Uh, peer awards were also presented. This year's recipients included Mary Gothers, Dr. Caitlin D'Alessandro, Brittany Saloni, Deb Vicente, Tess Bouchelle, Becky Weaver, and Patty Ayers. Meet and greet took place today across the district, so I know those of you who are parents on the board, you heard all about meet and greet. I had the opportunity to visit Emerson Williams today, got to meet our incoming kindergarten class, as well as welcoming back many old friends. I can tell you that the kids are very excited to be back. I think the parents are very excited for the kids to be back <laughs> as well. And as we get ready for the start of the school year, uh, just to offer a few pieces of advice. Um, folks, please be alert for bus traffic and uh, bus stops when the red lights are flashing. Passing a school bus while lights are flashing will result in a $465 ticket. And again, the other uh, consequences could be far worse with our students. Uh, please be patient in school parking lots and on roads around schools. Uh, plan to arrive early as vehicular traffic will be plentiful. Um, we're going to need to get into the flow of who's who and what the process is for drop-offs. Uh, please follow drop-off and pick-up procedures established at schools. Uh, while they're in place for your safety purposes, we want to make sure that no one is injured. Um, also, for parents that are concerned about transportation issues, we've had a number of uh, folks call in. Please understand that we are in the process of reviewing each of the concerns. Uh, Mr. Kazaka and myself will be going out and actually riding the buses after the start of the school year to analyze routes and to make any potential changes. You can see in the audience he is thrilled. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for us to see how efficiently the buses are running, um, get out and be able to meet our parents, and for me especially, to model appropriate behavior um, on our school buses. So that's a, a critically important piece. Um, and again, on behalf of the administration and staff, I'd like to wish everyone a successful 2019-2020 school year, and I look forward to seeing everyone on Thursday out in the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Any questions for Mr. Emmett? Anyone? Okay, that's great. All right, continuing with our agenda tonight, we have two updates. And first is our budget update. Is Matt coming up? Yes, yeah, so we can have Mr. Kazaka come up to the podium. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Good evening. <laughs> Everyone has the documentation from the finance meeting we had just prior to this meeting. Mm -hmm. Quick update on two fiscal years. The 18-19 year closed with a surplus of $22,210. That will roll into the 2% reserve fund, which was previously the 1% reserve fund. And the purpose of that account is to fund capital improvement projects throughout the district. For the 1920 budget year, we implemented a 75% spending cap, effective July 1st. So we will monitor that throughout the month of September, determine if that's sufficient to cover our costs and our payroll needs for the fiscal year. Okay, any questions for? Mr. Kazaka? Can you explain that second one again? 
the 75 percent spending yeah. cap yeah that's going to continue or start again it's going to continue we'll determine yeah. if it's sufficient if we have to increase okay. or if there's a freeze altogether okay anyone else well sometimes after we read the fine print we'll get back to you absolutely <laughs> email me any questions and okay. matt this information is also included on our website Per Correct. Statute? Yep. Okay. The day after the Finance Committee meeting, which will be tomorrow, I'll upload it onto our website and we'll have all the detail. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. And our other update is our 2019 <clears throat> Summer Facilities Project update. Michael? Yes. I wanted to give you a uh, brief synopsis of the summer building projects and uh, things that have gone on over the course of the summer in the school district. Um, as you know, we embarked upon the shared services model, so um, we've worked um, closely <coughs> with the town with regard to uh, various projects across the district. Um, you'll see this evening that some have been completed, uh, some are kind of in between, and some have not yet started and need to get done. So. Uh, Let's head through. So I'll talk first about Charles Wright. Um, one of the things that was done at Charles Wright over the course of the summer was the asphalt was replaced on the playground and the basketball um, area. This is behind the portable, behind the building. This was a capital improvement that was slated for last year and it was bid and it was, uh, the bids came in way, way, way high. So we were forced to put that off to this summer. Uh, it was rebid. The bids came in favorably, and you can see the work that's being done there. Um, we did find when um, they excavated, there was quite a bit of clay there, so they had to remove the clay and put a lot of process down to make sure that the um, asphalt uh, does not bend or buckle. So you can see the, the stark difference here. So this has been completely lined, so there are lots of games for the kids to play. And you'll notice, yes, you, I heard, Bobby, you mentioned yeah. the portable there. Yes, the getting portable is getting looking. tired. That portable dates back, I did find a file in the office today. That portable dates back to 2000, 2001. So that's almost 20 years old. Um, what you see on that portable is the skirting is down. They had to take that off so they could do the uh, finished work around the uh, blacktop at the base. Uh, the town did have a structural engineer go in and take a look at that. Um, I haven't gotten the results back on that particular piece. Uh, the other thing that happened over the course of the summer, unfortunately, early in the summer, we had uh, a couple of windows broken at uh, Charles Wright in the portables, um, so we needed to utilize our surveillance system. So there were several families that will be responsible for uh, the cost of replacing those windows, unfortunately. So they have been repaired at this point in time, and the portable is ready to go. And with this, uh, it looks great, it looks fantastic. I will tell you, we're going to need to keep a close eye on this. This will be a popular location for uh, kids to congregate and play. So uh, we're definitely gonna have to make sure that uh, they are playing appropriately and not hanging out and up to no good. Here's an aerial shot. I did not take this, I will admit. This is Mr. Horder from the roof of the portable. I thought it was a drone. Yeah, nice fish. Yes, no, 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 no drone here. <laughs> So you can see there's a variety of different games that the kids will be able to play. It's a nice, uh, very nice up-to-date space. Moving over to Webb, uh, one of the issues we had at Webb was uh, some spalling sidewalk. And you can see this area here. This was done within the town. Uh, this area has been jackhammered out and has been repaired. 
and again, you can see the work that's being done, our uh, town employee taking care of that. Off to the left by the flagpole, uh, you may recall there was a, a significant tree there. That tree came down. Uh, it had gotten to the point where it was growing over the roof and it was not really healthy, so the town took that down early in the summer. So this web sidewalk is complete and ready for traffic. Also at Hanmer, we didn't do a lot at Hanmer this summer, but one of the things we did take care of was tree removal. We had, uh, I believe, three trees here. Uh, one was pretty rotten, and then the one that was on the uh, left edge was uh, growing over the roof. So it was time to go. I want to talk about the high crest portables because we are still at uh, ground zero with these uh, things. They've had it. Uh, we're not using them. We did not use them at all last year. Uh, we went out to bid, and the bid came in more than $200,000 over what had been budgeted. So at this point in time, the town is going to be heading back out to bid. I don't have an exact date as to when that's going to be. Um, we're not using these, and at this point in time, this area is actually walled off. So what we've needed to do as our enrollment continues to grow at um, Highcrest, we took the uh, computer lab and we created two classroom spaces, one being a new kindergarten class, which um, we had within our budget. So we have four sections of kindergarten at Highcrest, and the other space will be for English language on the opposite side. Currently, the computer lab has been moved into the media center, and I'm working on procuring some uh, dividers to divide off the space between the computer lab and the uh, media center. So we're working on that now. My expectation would be, um, based on the word I've heard from uh, the folks from the town, we're looking at next summer. I was hoping December time, but to demolish what you have there, to rip up the foundation, put new foundation, allow new foundation to cure, you're talking about a time frame that you're not going to be able to do within the typical school calendar. Um, so I'll certainly keep everybody updated. I'll be meeting with Ms. Katz on Friday morning to go over all of our uh, current projects and what's still in the hopper. Um, so I'll have more information for you in the Friday update. Here's the K build out so you can see this was done in house. Uh, our carpenter Rocco did this. So uh, this is not yet finished. So this was just after the sheetrock went up. And this actually, it's, it's a nice little space. So we think it'll be a nice classroom space. And again, knowing full well the design of this building, it's early 70s, it's open classroom, and it's, it's way outdated. We uh, replaced the kiln at Emerson. This was a challenge and a half over the course of the summer. So um, what you see there in the upper left corner, you see the exhaust uh, vent that goes out. We actually had to have a company come in and bore a 22-inch hole through the brick to get the vent out. And then uh, right before I uh, had gotten there to take the photo, the maintenance staff was actually uh, creating the uh, railing that you see there put, and putting that together. So at this point in time, a couple small items with this, but it should be ready to go for the kids for day one. One of the things I know in the past, Fred used to get up and, and show you like 500 pictures of uh, clean floors. Uh, I will tell you, this is just one example, but this is um, Emerson from, from last week and the floors are absolutely beautiful. And if you go to the high school and you go into the cafeteria, it's like you can skate on those floors. They are absolutely brilliant. So the custodial staff did a phenomenal job this summer, and especially those buildings where we had summer programs. For example, over at Hanmer, we did not finish up with the Y program until last week. So right up until Friday, Mr. Strong, who was trying to get this building ready to go, had some 50 kids in the gym. So uh, a major challenge here. I want to talk about the WHS generator. Um, now, you know full well that we invested in a beautiful generator that's within the building. Uh, over the course of the summer, we had the power go out and the generator did not run. So the town has spent the better part of the summer trying to figure out why it isn't running. And as the design called for no emergency lighting, as we found out, when you have a generator, you don't have to have emergency lighting. No generator means no lights. So no lights means no school opening. So here is the uh, solution for the short term. This is a CAT portable generator. They're going to test fire this tomorrow. So in the event we lose power at Weathersfield High School, this unit will kick on. Uh, I'll have an update for you in the Friday update as to what's going on with our generator. Um, I know there are parts that are currently ordered. 
Um, so hopefully I'll have a diagnosis for you at the, uh, at the end of the uh, week. I can tell you the last time we used it where it worked, we had a day, I want to say it was in April, where we lost power at the high school. The generator kicked on, it worked fine, and we didn't skip a beat. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. There was discussion about the fact that it might have been filled with biofuel. We haven't filled with biofuel based on our invoices. It was all number two uh, fuel oil. Uh, there's also discussion about, you know, was it something within the diesel motor? The town was going to have the Cummins diesel expert come out and take a look at it. Again, I don't know if that's happened yet, but um, we'll certainly follow up. So that's the extent of it. Um, where we are right now in terms of some items that we need, I'm still looking for some furniture items. We're still uh, in the process with regard to our window filming. So that's in, in the queue. There's money that's been allocated for that. That capital improvement's been approved. I understand a purchase order's been pulled. So um, that will be forthcoming. And uh, we just have a few other items uh, on grounds over at Emerson. We have an area where the blacktop is caving in. So we think that needs to be addressed, and we'll be looking at uh, making a solution for that sooner rather than later. And last but not least, the flagpole over at Emerson Williams, I told you during the course of the summer that was to be painted. Uh, it got painted today, so yeah. it has been addressed. So with that, I'll take any questions, and I will tell you also, it's my expectation at the next board meeting, I'd like to have Sally Katz come in as well, um, give you a little deeper dive in terms of what we're doing and some of the other projects that will need to be addressed over the course of uh, this year. Anyone with any questions, for Michael? Oh my, just the pictures again, it's quite obvious these buildings are getting tired. They yes. really are. I'm disappointed that the portables are not being taken down at Highcrest because they are an eyesore and who knows what's gonna be living in them with these little creatures. Um, but um, the other piece too is the generator at the high school. Very disappointing that that would happen to a brand new school. That's, that's a problem. And I will speak, Mrs. Granado, to the issue of the portable. One of the things we talked about back in June yeah. was in terms of the next steps. There was discussion around taking the portables down and having town staff do it. And it was determined that there was not enough time and manpower here in town to be able to take those down and take them offline. I'd certainly like to see them go down. Um, and unfortunately, the piece with the bid as well, I understand that the bid was sent out where it was demo and replace. So to be able to have another contractor come in and do it, you would have had to go out to bid again separately for that, just for the demo, so. Okay. Is that generator that's at the high school on that upper parking lot right off of DeChico Field? It is on the upper parking lot above DeChico Field, right adjacent to the generator. So, and our expectation is we're gonna get our generator fixed and up and, and running. That will and be taken off That will be taken off, pro uh, off premises, that's correct. Okay, anyone else? All right, thank yeah, you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next on our agenda, Board of Ed meetings held. And we did uh, on your agenda, it says Special Board of Education meeting. We already did discuss that, and that was when we okayed the principal for um, Hamner. There's Special Board of Education meeting on um, 8A619. That was our Canon copier that we um, okayed the contract for. And the Special Board of Education meeting on 820. 19 was for a grievance. Um, Chris, you already talked about policy and planning. I don't think we have to go over that again. We got it all covered. And finance and information committee, which we held just before our board meeting. Kevin, you want to sure. speak to uh, it? Sure, Mr. Kazaka uh, walked us through the 2018-2019 and uh, year end with our $22,000 surplus that's going into our reserve fund. Uh, one thing I did want to add is that uh, uh, our audit, our annual audit will take place uh, hopefully sometime in September and there'll be a report sometime in November, December that we can bring to the board. Great. Okay, thank you. We do have meetings scheduled 
Facilities and Maintenance Committee will be 9-4-19 at 6 o'clock. And Wethersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, WEC, will be 9-9-19 at 4.30 p.m. at the library. Is there any unfinished business on the board? Okay. So is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you, we keep you to about five minutes. Okay. Are there any board comments? Oh, we're going to leave here soon oh, tonight. Go ahead, Elaine. Mr. Emmett, um, usually we experience people being registered at the schools these last few days. Have you noticed any classes get a big bump from the, what you've sent us out? Have, are there, you know, in the secretary's office there used to be, and it could be different now because of technology. I, I signed 58 registrations yesterday, okay. so but we've been again. we've been on top of them. Um, at this okay. point in time, the numbers and I sent the numbers out in the Friday packet yeah. on on Friday. The numbers look favorable. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not looking at any significant bump. We did have more kindergartners register. That was the bulk of what the 58 oh. were. Um, so and these were kids that were likely they were in the system and in the process, and we've just. Um, verified residency and now they're going in for signature so many of these kids may have already been on the list okay. so right now we're looking okay okay thank you okay anyone else all right well this morning as michael was discussing we had the official start of the 2019-20 school year with our convocation for all weatherfield public school staff you know the excitement of a new school year is wonderful to experience and quite unique to education Teachers are so excited to have their classrooms and their curriculum ready for a very exciting and sometimes anxious students. And this new start is not unlike a happy new year where resolutions are made along with the desire to improve and grow and the commitment to stick to them. So this board wants to wish everyone a very successful beginning to another very exciting school year. And we don't have our high school um, representative, so no news from the high school. Um, but at this time, I make a motion to move to executive session for the possible action regarding the superintendent of schools evaluation. So moved. Okay, is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that concludes the public part of our board meeting. Thank you all for coming and for watching. The board wishes you a good night.